I, I don't only know how to in, I only know how to introduce like I introduce. I'm sorry. So what what how, hey everybody, thanks. welcome to the first episode of Bully and B. I'm Erica B. I'm Bully. I, your I, full I, your full moniker, please. I, I'm Bully the Kid. Okay, that one. That's act. Oh yeah. Anyways, um, we decided to start us a little podcast. We've been married for a long time and wanted to talk about it, essentially. Uh, so we will be doing that. Mm-hmm. So that's that's about it, right? That's pretty much it. It's the long and short of it. It's pretty much whatever we want to talk about at the time. It's going to be conceptual. Like we'll have an overarching idea and then it'll just kind of evolve how it evolves. Yeah, yeah just fun conversation. Pretty much. When does that work? I don't know. You got the checklist? I have a checklist. I'm a checklist type person. <laughs> uh, birth stories is a little too much for the first episode. <laughs> let's just loud, just, just loud it, yeah. Let's just start with loud all of them. You want to do the ten years? Yeah, let's do the ten years relationship. Let's let's, let's, let's okay. softball. Let's talk softball. about how yeah. we got together and our marriage or something like that. Okay, so let's uh, let's start at the very beginning. Uh, I originally wanted to get into a guitar class. That class was full. This is at Magnet State University. I had to take a fine arts credit. I wanted to take a guitar class because I already play bass. So uh, I figured that would be nice. But that class was full. So the next class that was open in the same time slot was piano. So this is where I actually met Erica in piano. And I took piano class for a far more heartwarming reason. My grandmother, she's 85 years old right now, and she has played the organ at her church since 19, I don't really know how long, at (laughs) least 50, 60 years. And she's always wanted all of her grandkids to know how to read music and play piano. And so I decided when I went to my music elective that I would do her the honor of learning to read music and becoming competent and confident as a pianist pianist it's a funny word uh <laughs> so that's how it started that's the initial placement uh i stole her music book and uh she had to come see me so yeah it was only because i was better than him free game that he sh- he stole my book <laughs> what? I, 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 I am flattered. I was flattered that he would request my tutelage by stealing my book. He still got a lesser grade than I because he never showed up to class. That's but besides that's neither the point. here nor point. there. It was definitely there, it not was here. There actually, still got my GPA. Leave me alone. It's still I still got a B. That's all I need. Anyways, fast forward, um, he wanted to talk to me, and I friend-zoned him for several months. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And told him about all my other escapades, Mm -hmm. all of my regretful choices, Hmm. in depth, and he kept coming around. Very nice of him. Sometimes you just got to let stupid take his course, and then once it does, then you can move forward. You're welcome. Now, it's stupid with you. Now, so... Uh Once she came to her senses and realized, huh? Come on now, huh? You know? Oh my God. Life has just been on an upslope, okay? Huh? Mm. The, the, the next two years, yeah. Then we separated. Yeah, he gave me an ultimatum. And I ultimated his matum, as my mother would say. Well, here's, uh, here, here's, here's, here's the thing. When you deliver an ultimatum, you have to be completely confident that they will comply in the thing that you want them to do. The thing that I wanted her to do was go out with me because I can't dance on any women because I'm dating her. So what do I do? You need to come out with me so I can dance on you because I can't dance on these women. And I'm upset because people are asking me to dance and I can't do it because I don't want nothing coming back to you because I don't want to deal with that. Mm. So I was like, either you go dance with me or we're not going to be together. And she was like... Okay, well, I'm in nursing school at the time. I have one, two semesters left of nursing school. You have fun with that, sir. Now, don't downplay me. I'm also an engineer. So, I'm 
studying to be an engineer. So that's the thing. But you know, I, I wasn't as focused. With a loose definition I wasn't as focused moment. as she was in mm -hmm. getting the goal accomplished. You know, that's there. I'm not here. I made it there. Okay. He, let's, made it. he did. Let's let's stay we'll there. We'll get to the why of that look, later. Let's just stand here and look at the final destination. You know, we mm -hmm. listen. We it was it's there. Okay, it's back there. And then you just look at. Sure. You know, this is what I'm asking. What I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. So we didn't talk for probably two and a half years after that. Yeah. Um. Kind of, off and on. There were certain times. Oh, yeah. When the car broke down. Yeah. So there was, Look a, at him. there was a situation where we're talking, discourse happens, and then she gets frustrated with me. We end on a sour note. I cussed him out. I was trying to be politically correct. Cuss him out. Sometimes they don't hear you the other way. She then called me right back because I did because my tire was flat mm. and so that did not negate the cuss out it but was also, just a but also you got to come see me look what all that brought you right back to me mm. anyway mm -hmm. so helped her with the situation left amicably didn't try to hang around and talk chop it up with you did my thing and mm -hmm. I left mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there was no Transactional. Boom, boom, boom. All right, cool. You mad at me. Fine. Left. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A few months later, uh, I don't know if she called me or if I called her, but came by her house, and uh, we were hanging out laughing, blah, 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 blah. Her being guarded, she told me that just because just because you over here don't mean we get back together. To which I immediately thought, then why the heck am I over here wasting our time together? Because it was a great situation. We was laughing and joking. Mm -hmm. it was good. Very funny people. Yeah. Well done. And that's pretty much how that conversation left. Because, oh, you just want to play in my face. All right, well, I'll just go ahead and you can play. I'll just be over here, gone. And uh, we didn't talk for a long time after that. Mm -hmm. Because no. And then uh, I'm dating people, making mistakes. I'm not going to talk about that. Mistakes were made. Yeah. Uh, they were the right decisions in my head at the time. So, uh, hindsight 2020. Not going to deal without a few decisions that I made. So, um... Then enter whenever that year was, two years after we broke up. 2012. There you go. And uh, take over from here. My best friend and I went on a trip and we were talking about what was going on with me. She'd been married. She's been married for a long time, since like 2007. And so she was asking me about my like dating situation, what's going on. And I'm telling her all the things. And she's like, this isn't really like you. I don't like, I don't see you as happy right now. When's the last time you were happy? Who's the last person that made you happy? And I told her and she was like, you know, maybe you should see if something could work out because it's not like you broke up because of fidelity reasons or because he was hurting you or anything like that. It was just a, you were on two different pages. So I took the leap and I called. Mm. Mm. And he answered. Let's put a pin right there. Yeah. Pin removed. This is the second time she's initiated, hey, what's good with us? Ah. Uh -huh. Let's go back, shall we? <laughs> you remember when she was saying that she friends on me and regaled me with all of her exploits and situations, mm -hmm. situationships, and all of those fun times yeah. or not fun times. Or times that don't count because mm, they don't. Oh, that's girl math. Yes. Um, so I'm sitting there and I'm still the same handsome dude. I had hair then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we were wolves, weren't we? Yeah. So this is how the uh, situation pivoted. Initially, my mom taught me to be a gentleman. 
treat women as though they are me? How would you want somebody to treat me? That's what my mom gave me as a motto for however I deal with women. So I am respectful. Almost to a fault at that time. Somebody I actually like, I can be soft with. And prior to me meeting her, my mother had just passed away. So I was kind of standoffish, to say the least. And uh, I took an interest in her very early on. She's pretty. Well, she's pretty and she's also cute. She's like sweet. So I was like, yeah. And she was wearing chucks. Nail in the coffin. Oh, yeah. So uh, I got in her good graces and we started chopping it up. Stuff like that. There was a situation where we were talking for hours. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Something like that. Some holiday. Yeah. We were just up. Up and talking. Like high school. But we grown. Ish. A little grown. <laughs> we're, not, we're not that grown. Anyway, uh, fast. This whole thing happened in the same semester, so and it, it had was to my be my first semester of college. So high school was very recent. Yeah. Um. So we we were chopping it up like all night. One particular conversation, and uh, I think I got off work at IHOP. Smells like syrup. Do you liked it? You smell like syrup. Anyway, so came through and we hung out, chopped it up late, you know, watched uh America's Next Top Model. Also live free or die hard. Let's keep it, you know what I'm saying? No, America's Next Top Model. And no, oh. I do not condone anything that went on on that show. It's gonna be fierce. So <laughs> <laughs> we were rooting for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh so I uh I asked if you know what I'm saying you want to actually date or not, and she kind of eh, changed the subject. I was like, "All right, bet." I let it pass. That was one of the first times I did it. She then is regaling me with other stories, and then we come to the fork in the road. So, how this initial thing happened was she was telling me about how she had an exploit and it didn't go as well. Now, at this point, I got to go to work in probably an hour and a half. I need to get my mental together so I can be as nice and get as much money as I possibly can from these random people. Right? Right? Right. So I tell her, you are explicative stupid, and I hope by the time you get your explicative, explicative mind together and realize I'm the one that you're supposed to be with, I hope that I'm still available. Because if I'm not, then you just... See, explicative out. Okay. Just got a PG. You could put it in. Yeah, we don't know how family friendly this show going to be. Well, I'm just trying. I'm, this is my best foot. Best foot for it. Uh, then I walked away. You don't sit there. You get out of there. I said it. I left her right there in front of the rec center. And I walked to my Crown Victoria down the way. Sure did. It was a long walk. And, and we poured Taurus. I walked towards my vehicle. It was a boy towards. I forgot it. Just whatever. I walked towards my vehicle. My, my job. Mm-hmm. Went to work or went home. It's, it's cool. Didn't talk to her again. Yeah. Then what happened? Then another friend probably convinced me to talk to you. Say again. Yeah, Sagan. My mm-hmm. friend Sagan was like, you know, he's cool. You should give him a chance. And I was like, um, okay. And so I went home to New Orleans for Christmas that year. Was walking with my little brother on a bridge to the ferry to go back to my parents' house. And I was like, you know what? Let's just go for it. Like, I've done plenty of terrible things this semester. He seems to be decent, cool. He not ugly. I'm going to go ahead and give him a chance. So I called him. I was on I-10 turning on to the 59. No, I was turning on to... He was in Houston. Yeah, I was on I-10. Nobody knows what this Sorry. words mean. Yeah, I was, I was in Houston, I-10, about to go to Kelly's Country Cooking. That's where it was. So... 
iTunes hitting that Extremely 59, packed 45. Extremely label directions. 45, By turning diamonds. around. University of Houston. Down the way. Boom. Uh, but I was about to get that chicken fried steak. That was about to happen. So Unbig your back for the story, please. I, my back was extremely large then. It still is now. I'm not going to change. This is who I am. You married me. 10 years, baby. 10 years. You're married for 10 years. Long anyway, story short. You're married for I, 10 years. We've got two beautiful children. Two boys. Uh, they are four and eight. We got to skip back and forward. You got to skip Do back we? in time to where I put the pen. Yes. So... I told the my line that I, I specifically remember this thing in my head because the where I was going. And I was like, why would you say this now that I'm in Houston? We could have hung out and talked about it and stuff like that. It's Whatever. Ne- it's neither here nor there. So a little bit further, over 12 uh, December 26th, we were chopping it up again after Christmas, obviously. And uh, she was like, the whoop, the whoop, whoop, the whoop, 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 and I was like, whoop, the whoop, the whoop, 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 and then she was outside my house, that brother's was not house. That day. Either way, she was outside my that house. Wasn't that day. That was it, it's day. all one thing. This whole story, this is this you is cliff exist. notes. Cliff notes. Mm-hmm. She was outside my house. She uh, asked to be my girlfriend, and I was like, <laughs> sure, and you're welcome. Also, that's when we started dating. Whoop, the whoop. Skip four to the second time when Angela brings her back to her senses and I'm still the best choice. And uh, she calls me. I answer. I have no clue why I answered, but I answered. Not me. That's why. Anyway. Do a little quick catch up, catch up, catch up. What's going on in my life? What's going on in her life? She's been a nurse for... Uh, just over eight, almost two years. Yeah, so she big baller and I'm still waiting tables. So I'm like, dang, I should have probably got out of college. Probably. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, move forward. So next, I don't know what the next step is. I don't know what's happening on your end. I only know my side. Oh, we started conversing again, decided to keep our same anniversary. And I was like, you still have to finish school because I can't be with no bum. <clears throat> you should finish school because I'm not going to be with a bum. Like, that's not changed. Uh, you were acting bumish before when you gave me this ultimatum. And it feels like you're still pretty bumish right now. So you're going to need to stop doing that yeah. and no. uh, catch up with real life. So he let me know that he still had a couple credits. And this is what happened. You know, he was still working. He had to work to pay for school, which he's always had an amazing work ethic. But he told me he had 14 hours to finish his engineering degree. 14 yeah. hours. Yeah, but I also had to pay this whole thing by myself and trying to scrounge up $3,000 for a semester. I fully understand. I is, it. It's not just like I have to pay $500 and then I can be an engineer. So yeah. I had to grind. I had to work. I took three jobs. Yeah, trying, no. so he I'm always paying. had a, a bunch of jobs. So, <clears throat> so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest this. I took a year off from school to work to try to get money, and I was like a piece of the way there. So yeah, uh, but I was like, I'm gonna invest this because you got it. Like you got it here. It's just a matter of circumstances, and so I'm gonna let you borrow this money, go get your degree because that's an investment in you that I already know that you can make good on. And you pay me back and we'll be good. And that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. And let me tell you this. I I didn't have school no more. So what does that mean? I have ample time to work as much as humanly possible to get this debt off my back. Because I'm not about to be indebted to her. Nope. Three months is how long it took me to pay that bread back. <laughs> I ain't got school no more. Every day. Double. Double, double. Also, go get a job. (laughs) So here's the thing. There was, I wanted to take a small break, like a week and a half to just chill. That's all I wanted to do. Because I'm working constantly, grinding constantly. No. All I wanted to do is take a week off and just Mm -mm. chill. You can take the rest of your life off from waiting tables. Go get a job. That was 
a headbutt clash there. I ended up, it made sense. By the time that week passed, she was on my head every single day. So I ain't getting no rest. applications, answering phone calls as you. Yeah, my name is Alan. <laughs> it's me. I'm Alan. That yeah. before Zoom was a big thing. Ah, yeah. simpler times. Yeah. yeah, nah, definitely. It was like, oh, let me put my phone number so that I can be like, oh, hold on. I answered his phone. Here you go. Take this interview. Let's go. We got time for this. Get me out of here. I was ready to go. I was ready to get out of small town, Louisiana. I was ready to start a whole new life. Get me out of here. Do it. Do it now. So the thing that I ran into uh, is if you have no experience, it's very hard to get experience. your first <laughs> job. So yeah. the in, the entry level positions are asking for two and three years of experience in the field doing the thing specifically yeah in my head that's not entry level then you're not entering into it Mm -mm. it's you want me to know the thing before i have to know the thing that you're going to teach me because no one thing is going to be the same between companies right so basically i had to have worked summers prior to graduation in which i can't intern because i can't get in because i don't have experience so how do I intern? Grandfather system. Somebody in the company brings in somebody. Yeah. It was definitely a lot of who you know yeah, yeah. In so engineering. Whereas nursing was like, oh, you got two days? I'm about to put you in charge. You was here yesterday too? <laughs> Come on. Come on. I'm going to actually put you over this whole little, you over everything. All this is you. Nursing is a different animal entirely. Yeah. Um. So... I think from graduation to my first job was what? It was like 11 10 months. months. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Now, in between, I did get to do, I got a taste of what that life is like. I worked a, uh, I worked at a polymer plant as a pretty much a journeyman assistant. So I was doing electrical stuff. I'm an electrical engineer. And that was really cool. One of my friends, her uh, colleague in honors classes, she put me on grandfather system. So I got to put that little piece of information on my resume for how long the job lasted. And plus I got paid pretty well. So I was cutting the table, like table jobs and then doing this in the morning, getting off and then sometimes going, get money on the side. It was pretty nice. Um, which made me really want to get a job because I know what that money is like. You were doing a lot of manual labor. You stink when you came home. You did not smell like syrup. It's a polymer plant, man. That's what it is. It's chemicals. So, I uh, also realized that I didn't want to work in a plant. Yeah, which is like a lifestyle. That was my, where that we, was my where dream. Where we were coming from, it was like everybody just went, bought Nomex, the little coverall things. And, and you didn't off, really know what short. they were doing after that. <laughs> you you just were short. like, you look like you got it together. Let's <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> no. no. I thought I had this fantasy thing, and that'll be in another how I got into engineering, how you got a nurse, and you can write that down. Uh, that was, it was a, a fantasy. Like, you know, I didn't know what the job entailed. I just seen the I just seen the product as a kid looking up at these cool people with hard hats and no mechs and they laughing and joking, hopping in the F-250. I'm country. That's awesome. And <laughs> they driving off down a gravel road to go and fit pipes or something. I don't know. All I remember is I was like eight or nine. And I seen this happen. I was like, that. I want to do that. So that's yeah. what started the whole thing. I got on site. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of hard work, which there's a lot of hard work to people that do it. But it was mm, just like I respect them. That's a lot. I'm scared of heights, and they had me up them on the top of these be tanks, out on these waters in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. You, you talking that? I'm talking about these oil tanks, the one you see me driving around the road, and this is big spiral stair that go up to the top. Do you know how strong winds are when they're coming off of a circular building? Do you understand drafting? All right, babe, nerding. People, they don't. They don't uh, understand. It's real scary. I'm big. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so he ended up getting a job. On my birthday, he got his letter of um, 
job offer yeah. letter. And um, it was in Tulsa, America. And we had never been to Tulsa, America. But I was willing to get out of Louisiana any kind of way. So I was like, okay, let's go. And we were already engaged at that point. We yeah. had been engaged since November of 20... I'm sorry, November of 13... Jeez, don't get old. I'm not getting old on nobody. <laughs> uh, we've been engaged for a, a couple months, but then it was like, okay, well, both church kids don't really want to be like shacking up, but yeah, we need to move and we need to be able to move into one place. So it was like, okay, well, let's kind of push this wedding up. Let's kind of also, it just fiscally did not make sense to have 15 different rents because we both had we had our I own separate places place in Louisiana. And it was like, I'm not coming up here and getting two new places and still having leases on these other places. That's so we moved. So we moved. We went back a couple weeks later, got married in Louisiana. And then we were, we cut ties with all our apartments in uh, Louisiana. We went back to Oklahoma. And so that was when married life kind of began, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. A year later, we were pregnant with our first son. And those that's a different story for another day. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, yeah, because mm -hmm. we went, I was sick on our first anniversary trip when we went to Memphis. I was like eight weeks. Oh. It was terrible. It was like 103 degrees and I was throwing up everywhere. Um, so we had him in January of 2016, and then we had Miles in August of 2020, so he's a coronial, corona baby, uh, pandemanian devil, something, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's him. It fits him. You'll, you'll, you'll learn about him later. Um, but overall, I think that we wanted to tell our story because it's been a good one. It's been ups and downs. It's been happy, sad, but mostly happy. It's been mostly ups. It's been really amazing and slightly scary. Uh, yeah, every day is scary a little bit. Otherwise, you're not living. <laughs> like between health scares and kids and moves like, and jobs, yep. all of that. So it was just very important for us to share that it's not all bad. Like you can make it. It's not always ending in gloom and doom and that we really do work through things and it can be done. That's what Anything said. else to add for our first podcast episode? I don't believe so. This went swimmingly. We only used one stick for it. do multiple takes. I ain't got time. <laughs> <laughs> we silly. So if you if you rock with us, then you good people. it's a good time. Yeah, you good people. We're a good time. Yeah. Um, I guess wrap it up. You want me to? Uh, I guess until next time, I'm Erica B. Bully the kid, and you've been watching Bully B. Yeah. <laughs>